Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the design of the synchronous binary counter. In this synchronous binary counter, the flip-flops are synchronized by a common clock pulse. And let's take this for example, we have a binary counter which counts from 0, 0 to 1, 1. So before we even do anything, we need to look at this diagram. We see that we see that there's always a present and a next state. So let's say the 0, 0, 0 was the present state. Your next state will be 0, 0, 1. And if 0, 0, 1 was your present state, your next state is going to be 0, 1, 0. So now we know that before we design the synchronous binary counter, we need to have the present state and the next state. And in the question given, you see that it tells us to design this counter using a T flip-flop. So we know that we will need to use a T flip-flop somehow. And we are going to need gate. So this could be like the AND gate, OR gate, uh, NULL gate, exclusive OR. But just use, use the minimum number possible. Right now, these are the four things we need to know before we can design the synchronous binary counters. And after knowing our parameters, the next thing we need to do is make a table for the present state, the next state, and the T flip-flop input. This diagram is similar to the diagram given to us in the example. And to make things easier for us, let's call the first bit A, second bit B, and third bit C. So let's say this was the present state, 0, 0, 0. And I told you 0, 0, 1 will become your next state, right? There should also be a way we can name the next state. So if the present state, the first bit was A, second bit B, third bit C. To prevent confusion, it's easy to just call the first bit of your next state A plus, second bit of your next state B plus, and third bit of your next state C plus. And that's what we did here. So we see that your present state, this is A, B, C, your next state is A plus B plus C plus. And you find out right here that every number is a 3-bit number. So if your input was 3-bit, then your output should be also 3-bit. And you notice that every number down here is a 3-bit binary number. And for flip-flops, it is one flip-flop to a bit. So if we have 3-bit numbers, we're going to have 3 different flip-flops. And if you notice in this diagram, all the numbers are 3-bit binary numbers. And for flip-flop, each bit gives up one flip-flop. And that's how we have our TA, TB, and TC. Let's try filling in the table. You can start with any number, but I mean like it's logical for like most of us to start from zero. So let's start with zero, zero, zero. So let's say our present state is zero, 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 which is this. Therefore, your next state is going to be zero, zero, one. And let's say our present state now is zero, zero, one. your next state is going to be 0, 1, 0. And now let's say our present state is 0, 1, 0. Your next state is going to be 0, 1, 1. And now let's say your present state is 0, 1, 1. Your next state is going to be 1, 0, 0. Let's say your present state is 1, 0, 0 now then your next state is going to be 101 one. present state 101 one. next state 110 present state 110 next state 111 present state 111 next state zero 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 and you see we are back to zero 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 so that's why we stop and before we fill in the t flip-flop there are some things we need to know let's start by drawing a table for the t flip-flop so anytime you see like q and q plus a a plus c c plus f f plus you should just know that that's the present state and the next state so now we can say q is the present state i'm going to say ps and Q plus is the next state. So those are the notations we use when it comes to like uh, binary counters. And T 
just signifies the T flip flop. So I'll just put flip flop as a subscript. So between Q and Q plus, which is the present state and next state, we have four possible combinations, which are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And now from these two columns, we can be able to predict the behavior of this T flip flop. So the T flip flop is also known as the toggle flip flop. And the T flip flop is only activated only when the present state and the next state have two different binary combinations. That is the only time the T flip flop is activated. So let's look at this table. We have a zero and a zero here. These two values are the same. So therefore there's no need for the T flip flop to be activated. So we're going to have a zero here. And for here we have a zero and a one because there's a discrepancy in the present state and the next state the toggle flip-flop is going to be activated and right here we have a 1 and a 0 because the present state is different from the next state the toggle flip-flop is activated the toggle flip-flop is 1 and right here we see that the present state and the next state is 1 1 and because like there is no discrepancy or, or there's, the values are not different the toggle flip-flop is going to be 0 this is the easiest way to get this just trust me on that and now that I have this information we're going to fill up the T flip-flop input I copy the table down here so I can erase this so now we're going to start by filling the toggle flip-flop input for the A value and all I just need to do is compare it with this table so here you see your A is 0 and your A plus is 0 here your Q is 0 your Q plus is 0 and your t is zero so therefore your t a will be zero and here zero zero the same thing zero 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 here the same thing zero 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 but now you see here that your a is zero and your a plus that's the next state of your a is one you you come back and look at this table you see that your q is zero your q plus is one and then you have a t of 1 so therefore your ta is going to be 1 and you come back here and you see your a is 1 your a plus is 1 you come here q1 q plus 1 is going to be 0 here it's 1 and 1 again that's going to be 0 here is 1 and 1 again that's going to be 0 and here you see it's 1 and 0 and you come here you see 1 0 it gives you 1 and then you, you're going to switch to the T flip-flop input of B. You start with 0, 0, 0, 0. When you look at this table, it's going to give you 0. 0, 1. Look at the table. It gives you 1. 1, 1. Look at the table. 1, 1. It gives you 0. 1, 0, look at the table, 1, 0, it gives you 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, it gives you 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, gives you 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, gives you 0, and one zero one zero gives you one and then we're going to go to the t flip-flop input for c zero one so you come to this table given to you zero one is one one zero one zero is one zero one we just said zero one was one one zero we just said one zero was one zero one 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 zero one zero one 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 zero one and that is how we fill the t flip-flop input so the next thing we need to do is continue with the question they say design a binary counter so all you just did here was fill in a table so now you're going to use this information and transform it to the design of a binary counter now that we have filled the table we want to know 
the equation of TA, TB, and TC. And there are two ways of doing that. It's either we use KMAP or we use the normal mean term expression. I'm going to use the mean term expression. And you can use KMAP. It's up to you. So remember, when finding your mean term expressions, you look at just the ones. So the input equation for TA is going to be A prime because A equals 0. B because B equal 1 and C because C equal 1 and we move to the next one so when you, you're moving to the next one you use a plus to signify the change of row and right here we see that A equal 1 so it's going to be just A B equal 1 is going to be just B and c equal 1 so it's going to be just c this equation can even be simplified further because this is the same thing as b c a prime plus a so it's just same thing as b c now let's find the next input equation which is tb i remember i told you when looking for the mean term expressions you're just concerned with the ones so you look at this one this one this one and this one for the TB flip-flop input because you're trying to find the input equation you're just concerned with the ones because that is going to give you the minimum term expression or the min term expression so for this one you see we have a equals 0 which is the same thing as a prime b equals 0 which is the same thing as b prime and c equal 1 which is the same thing as c plus the plus signifies a change to the next row. A equals 0, which is the same thing as A prime. B equals 1, which is the same thing as B. And C equals 1, which is the same thing as C. So right now, I'm sure you know that if A equals 0, is the same thing as A prime. And if A equals 1, is the same thing as just A. All right, let's go back to finding TB. Now we switch over to the next row, plus A equal 1, that is A, B equal 0, that is B prime, and C equal 1, that is C, plus, we switch over to the next row, A equal 1, that is A, B equal 1, that is B, and C equal 1, that is C. And because of this, 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 and this, you find out that it can even be further simplified. And this can also be equal to BC plus B prime C. BC plus B prime C can also be further simplified. Because of these two primes, we find out that it can be further simplified to just C. And last but not least, let's find the T flip-flop input equation for C. And you notice in this column, everything has a 1. And if you remember in your K-maps, let's say this is A, B, C, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. Everything was 1. And now we group them together. And you find out that this is a group of 8. And because of that, Everything is going to cancel out and you find out that your e equation is just going to be simplified as 1. So that's the same thing that's happening here. We have A, we have B, we have C, and everything is a 1. And when you group them together, it's going to give you a 1. In every K-map, it's a rule. If every cell is filled with 1s, that equation, no matter how big it is, can be minimized to 1. Your TC is just going to be 1. Right now, we find out our TA is equal to BC, our TB is equal to C, and our TC is equal to 1. And with this information, we can design our binary counter. So we have three flip-flops, which are TA, TB, and TC. And they have clocks. Every flip-flop has a clock. And of course, they have A, an output of A, and A prime and 
for toggle B, it has an output of B and B prime. And for toggle C or T flip flop C, it has an output of C and C prime. So due to the fact that this is a synchronous binary counter, each of these toggles are connected to the same clock, short for CLK. So we say TA is BC. So that is same thing as B and gate C. So it has to be something like this. This is an AND gate BC. So our TA is going to have an AND gate, which is connected to B and C. And TB from this equation has an input of C, while TC has an input of just one. You can design your binary counter like this, or you can actually put in the wires. So you connect your B like this and your C like that, and just make things look scruffy. Your C connects to here, and you have a one here. Oh, this wire makes it look really scruffy. It's better you show your diagram like this. This diagram is your final answer because it shows how to design a synchronous binary counter using T flip-flops. And that's it guys. If you have any questions, comments, or you want me to do a video in a topic you do not understand, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Have a nice day. And as usual, this is a smiley face for you guys. Peace.